Hi, welcome to my video on how magnets react with a lot of different elemental metals. I have made this video because a lot of people seem to know very little about how metals react with a magnet. I haven't been able to afford all available metals yet, but will expand in the future so I can update this video. Some of the metal samples are quite small due to cost, so I will use a magnet of similar size. It is tiny, but has the power to reveal any attraction to the metals. Let's start with a simple one, iron. Iron is ferromagnetic, meaning that it will not only be attracted to a magnet, it can be magnetized in the self. So can nickel and cobalt. Gadolinium is actually also ferromagnetic, but only below 20 degrees Celsius. Above 20 degrees Celsius, it turns strongly paramagnetic. This means it still attracts the magnet, but it can no longer be a magnet in itself. Now let's take a look at some lightweight metals. They may be light, but they are quite potent. Lithium will etch your bare skin. Beryllium in dust form is among the most poisonous non-radioactive elements. And magnesium will burn extremely hot and bright. Next up I will quickly go through some more ordinary metals. Okay, we are almost a third of the way. These cylinders have the same dimensions, but the weight difference is hard to believe. Here we have what could be called the twins of metals. They are very difficult to separate, so zirconium samples will always contain some hafnium and opposites. How about some toxic ones? This is mercury with some little glass fragments floating around on it. I haven't figured out how to filter it yet. Now for some more of the transition metals. The antiferromagnetic and beautiful chromium. The brittle manganese. The superconducting niobium. and the hard to melt molybdenum.
from a metal with a high melting point to one with a very low one. Gallium, known for melting in your hand. Moving on to some metals that most people never see in real life. The lanthanides, also known as the rare earth metals. Neodymium is one of my favorites. It is used in my powerful magnets and green lasers. But in pure form it is not much fun. After having found some more metals that visibly attracts the magnet, let's take a look on the metal that repels a magnet the most. In other words, the most diamagnetic metal, bismuth. It is still a very weak repulsion, but it can be used for diamagnetic levitation. Finally, I have the infamous uranium. So, the conclusion is that the magnet will stick strongly to 4 of my metals at normal temperatures, but a total of 10 metals can have enough attraction to lift the magnet. Feel free to comment, rate and subscribe. There will be a part 2 when I have more medals. Thanks for watching.